MIA from Shepherd uh, missing in action. Well, Ricky Lambert never missing in action around here. And the Prime Minister, uh, when it comes to marketing, is not missing in action. He's like a rock star, according to a Mid North South Australian newspaper, Ricky. Yeah, that's quite right. Uh, they've reported a big headline, not just a rock star, a billion dollar rock star, they say Prime Minister Morrison is because he showed up in their local electorate. Maybe a billion dollars of coal rock that he was holding at one point in Parliament. Ricky, maybe give us an explanation behind why we don't seem to be getting this information about his visits. Um, and then if we can go and look at uh, what he's really promising and how this uh, maybe conflicts with a lot of what uh, people are expecting of our government. Well, I think the problem here is what's been regularly referred to as the Canberra bubble. The Prime Minister and his cohort in their media management team like to have have good visual appearances on the uh, the Sunrise Television and the Today Show and all of those metropolitan media outlets. So they don't let everyone know that they're coming to a particular area. They just drop in and drop out so they get their positive appearances and uh, then they get these unexpected things happen like a man flips him a bird at the front of the Clare Flower Festival uh, and that's the kind of things they don't want happening. But for some reason they don't seem to want Flow FM to be covering his appearances in these local areas either. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, uh, the local member is Rowan Ramsey and uh, we interview him here on this station but we weren't informed of this visit and uh, I suspect that, um, that when you go back say, to a ear of John Howard, where David Fawcett was the local member. He contacted the station and asked us to be there to ask questions of John Howard at his appearance in Gawler back in 2007. I might add that John Howard at that occasion, in what uh, was a fairly strong uh, Labor stronghold, the town of Gawler, was greeted like a rock star in a similar way that the Prime Minister may have been in Clare. But uh, only two or three months later at the November election, he was defeated and so was David Fawcett, uh, the member for Wakefield by Nick Champion and Kevin Rudd's Labor government. So just because people cheer you on when you go to a country area like a floral flower festival, uh, maybe it's not really what country people are thinking. Well, for our South Australian listeners, they'll well remember the term that was used for former Premier Mike Rand, Media Mike. And yeah. I think people, I mean, in, on Twitter, they call the PM Scotty from Marketing. He had that previous role with Tourism Australia and the Where the Be Hell Are You uh, marketing campaign. Pain. And I think that's what people are starting to feel about the Prime Minister is that he's like Media Mike, he's Media Morrison, uh, where he very carefully stage manages his appearances uh, because shielding particular outlets out of knowing that he's even in the electorate or in the case of our Roseworthy Studios, uh, opening an, a drought assistance program for local people right in our own town and we weren't told about it by the federal government tells you they're very wary of possibly being asked some difficult questions. And maybe um, that part of that is, is because uh, we see see uh, three massive uh, trailers carrying a huge um, the wind turbine uh, blade that the like of which um, uh, has not been seen now one of our staff members here actually saw that heading up main north road as the prime minister was probably heading up the same main north road probably just in front of the uh, very slow moving three semi trailer loaded um, the wind turbine blade and then uh, you see that's going to be placed in our mid north area now i'm not saying that these wind turbines aren't going to be useful and so forth but why is it that uh, the government seems to have a love affair with building wind turbines in regional areas, yet uh, some of the most magnificent hills overlook the city of Adelaide? And if uh, there is such a love in uh, with Mr Morrison uh, and the state government in South Australia, why aren't they building wind turbines down the Flurio Peninsula along the most uh, windiest escarpment <laughs> that the state has? Yes, well, I think if city folk and li- people who live in inner cities love wind turbines so much and they, they swear black and blue they don't affect you, health then they should have them on on the Mount Lofty ranges and maybe overlooking Melbourne and Sydney yeah. as well on the Blue Mountains those coastal mountain ranges pick up plenty of wind and there's certainly some hot air that comes out of politicians I know they've used to joke they should put them on top of Parliament House to generate plenty of hot air that would move the turbines there but I think what's happening is that the state politicians are fearful of offending the media team of the Morrison government. Uh, I think that's what's happening here is we're starting to get this apologetic approach from state media managers when it comes to governments that they don't want to offend the PM's media team and I think that that's what we're going to have to get to the bottom of here. Well, maybe uh, we should see uh, until we get less wind turbines in country hills and we see them being built across the escarpments of our major cities. I mean, Brisbane's a lovely big uh, hill line above the city there. The Yarra Ranges in Melbourne 
Melbourne uh, if um, the politicians and those uh, Green folk that are really pushing these policies and those in the Labor Party, including Mr Albanese, they want wind farms, then why aren't we seeing wind farms built uh, on the cities um, just directly above where they live, uh, on these beautiful escarpments above uh, the uh, coastal plains? It just seems to me that uh, we've got a double standard here from our federal government that's been supported by our state governments.